everyone, it's Laurie from Cook Scrap Craft and welcome to today's scrapbook process video. This is for the July Mix It Up Monday YouTube and Instagram hop. Uh, basically, it's a social media hop where we share projects that mix it up, such as uh, using a traditional scrapbook layout with different types of media like texture paste, foil, paint, ink, spray, gesso, thread, stitching, whatever you like to do for your mixed media. The hop is a collaboration between Anna from Peace Craft Love and Kimberly from I'd Rather Be Scrapbooking, but anyone is welcome to play along. There's going to be a link in the description box below that uh, tells you how you can participate in the next one. The inspiration sketch is posted on the last Monday of the month, and then the hop takes place on the second Monday of the month. Um, so yeah, everybody who's participating is also linked below in the description box, and we are using a sketch from Inspired Blueprints. This is a blog that is no longer active, however, I remember Inspired Blueprints from way back in the day, like probably 2006, 2007, 2008, somewhere in that time frame maybe, even like 2009, 2010 maybe. Um, and I remember using Inspired Blueprint sketches all the time. So I don't know why the blog isn't active anymore. I hope that the person who was running it is still scrapbooking and maybe they just didn't want to do it. Um, they didn't want to they didn't want to do it on a blog anymore, or maybe they've switched to a different um, username, and they're on social media under a different name. Um, I don't know, but uh, definitely check out the uh, the sketch that's posted, or that I am showing you right here in this uh, in this video, and um, check out the rest of the stuff that Inspired Blueprints has. You know, the, the everything else I guess is still up. There just hasn't been anything new in a while, so. Basically, I um, am being inspired by the, the general design. Um, I'm going to use two photos and I'm going to cut them down to 4x4 four four size. Um, you can see I, I've pulled a couple things there, a stencil, I'm doing some inking on a white tag. The photos that I have are sort of birthday themed. My kid got a Build-A-Bear Workshop birthday crown because Build-A-Bear Workshop was celebrating, I think it's 25th anniversary, um, and so she was wearing it around the house and I have these photos. So I decided to try to try to do like a birthday theme. So I have three tags. One of them I added some birthday pattern paper to. And then, I, you know, I these tags are just plain white. They were part of my June Best of Both Worlds kit and I'm just trying to like find different ways to use them. So I thought I would do something different with each of the three tags that I pulled. So one has pattern paper on it. Um, this one is going to have cupcakes stamped on it and that's using um, a very old Stampin' Up! pad. It's a, like a teal color. I don't even know if they make the color anymore, but I've had it for a really long time and surprisingly it still works. Um, so then this next one I'm going to, um, I see that little cut apart that has the little candies on it. I thought that was really cute and I wanted to use them and like adhere them to the tag, but I didn't want to fussy cut them out. So I just took a one inch circle punch and now I'm punching out all of those pieces. And I feel like Something with this layout um, is that I, I do a lot of work <laughs> and I do a lot of stuff and then a lot of it ends up just getting covered up anyway. So that happens sometimes with your mixed media. You put in all this effort to create different things or really just I guess with scrapbooking in general and then uh, and then you realize, oh, this is actually going behind something, so not much of it is gonna show. Like, okay, I guess I I guess I didn't need to like Maybe I was like overthinking things a little bit, but it, it's fine. This is also just something that you could do if you um, make your own tags or if you, you know, like gift tags or if you want to use tags in a different way on another layout. These are also some fun ideas that you could do. So stamping, just covering it with powdered paper. I did a little bit of splattering there with uh, the saltwater taffy color from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to set that aside. And then my plan is to stick those, um, those punched out circles on top once the um, splatter has... Uh, dried up. Uh, so now I've got my photos and I did write on the back of them the date and what size I wanted to cut them to so I wouldn't forget. So they were originally printed in 4x6 and now I'm cutting them down to size 4x4 because I feel like that is the size that looks to be uh, similar to what's in the sketch. And also, you know, it's like they're like square photos and, and I like having them be a little bit smaller because it gives you more room 
to see the the mixed media stuff which I think is what I'm gonna oh here we go so I'm gonna get ready to do the mixed media stuff but first I have to like, figure out the placement of all of the stuff that's going to go on the white Vicki Booten foundations cardstock so I've cut my um, solid cardstock and then the little like flower strip there um, I'm just trying to figure out I, I don't want the pink cardstock to be too big um, I want it to be a little bit smaller, so I'm just cutting that down to size and figuring out the placement. The photos are going to be kind of angled and one sort of on top of each other. Um, and so now I'm going to go with a pencil and lightly just kind of draw at the corners so that I can remember the placement of all of these things. And then it also gives me an idea when I put the stencil down of where I need to be stenciling so that something will actually show up um, and where uh, where I should like stencil so that I, I know it's going to like be going under because I want the stencil to appear as if it's popping out from behind the photos. So I have this dauber that's on my desk and I guess I didn't clean it very well because I was trying to do like a teal color and it ended up being more of like a like a navy blue, which that's fine. I was okay with. Um, then I will go back and add a second color in uh, in just a second here. But I'm using, you know, I have that ink, that teal ink thing. It's uh, Ingvid Balm, and I like it, but more for, like, stamping up and down. It doesn't do as good a job as the daubers do, like, swirling things around, right? Is that, does that make sense? Um, the scrap, I, you can get them from scrapbook.com. That's where I have mine. I think they were, I got them as like a freebie at some point. Um, but you can get these, you know, ink daubers anywhere, really. It doesn't matter what brand you use, but I definitely like the ink daubers a lot better for stenciling purposes as opposed to um, like a handheld stamp thing or stamp pad or, or what have you. So now I'm adding in more of the teal color. Um, I really like the shape of this stencil. You know, I didn't have anything that was, I didn't have a stencil that was like specifically, you know, you, where you could see it and be like, it's birthday, but I, I kind of just liked the shape of this. Maybe you could say that it's like confetti. I don't know. Um, so I just did the two colors of that. Um, and then it's time to start putting stuff down. And the great thing about doing stamping with mixed media is that there is not as long of a, a wait time for things to dry as there is when you are using um, misting sprays and that kind of thing. The liquid stuff always takes a longer time to dry than the uh, than the stamp stuff. I will say my hands were super dirty after making this layout, so you might want to have some baby wipes handy just to kind of clean your hands off as you go so you're not getting colors on things that don't need to have color. Um, I actually need to bring more baby wipes down into my scrap room because I have run out, unfortunately. I, you saw earlier I tried to wipe off the stamp that I used and the baby wipe um, the container like didn't close properly so that was just like a dried out wipe so it didn't really help that much um, but I, I need to bring some more down here it's always a really good tool to have in your crafting arsenal so I've got those two pieces of paper down and I'm just going through and trying to erase some of the pencil marks so that they don't show and then I'm going to stick down my photos and I had pulled some sequins here um, I end up not using them I really like the sequins but I think they're more they're better for like um, shaker pockets really so I need to do something with a shaker pocket with these sequins they have like um like bubbles things it's not just sequins um they're like dimensional pieces inside as well and so I think yeah it's not really something that's easy to stick down and a lot of the pieces are really tiny um so I need to do I need to make a shaker pocket with that so stay tuned to the channel in case I do that in an upcoming video um if you are a subscriber you'll know when that video goes live and if you haven't subscribed please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on other process videos and scrapbook inspiration. I post a Tuesday process video every week. I also participate in a variety of different hops and challenges throughout the month and then sometimes there will be like bonus process videos. You never know when those are going to go up. Um, so I hope that you consider subscribing and uh, you know joining the joining this fun YouTube online community I think I'm almost 800 subscribers which is pretty cool and maybe if I can get to like a thousand I'll do a giveaway again I did a giveaway for how many did I have like 600 or 500 or something I don't know I did a giveaway at the beginning of the year and it was awesome um, so maybe I'll have to do another one if I get to a thousand I've still got a way to go but I can get there yes so now I have um, 
gotten my first two tags. I did a little bit of twine, tied the twine through the the, the hole in the tags, uh, just to kind of give it a finished look. One, The middle one has a yellow one, and then the two on the outside are gonna have a navy and white one. Um, and then you can see that I stuck down those circles onto the tag, and then you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second, how I do all this work, and then like all of it gets covered up by the photos. But that's fine. And really, as I'm thinking about this, I, I wasn't thinking about it while I was creating this, but the tag thing is like birthday, right? That's, that's another birthday theme. I just pulled the tags because I had them and I wanted to use them. Um, and now I'm, I'm, I'm like, wow, good for me. That made a lot of sense. So now I'm trying to figure out how, where to put some of my embellishments. And I had pulled a couple things that I knew would be a really good fit for this layout. So um, from my June Best of Both Worlds kit, there were several stickers that said things like, let's celebrate and party. Um, and I have a, a very old, well, not very old, but an older um, die, die cut embellishment that said it's always tea time and I have saved it because I'm like well maybe I'll have like tea pictures I'm never gonna have tea pictures and I'm not gonna stage a photo shoot just to get tea pictures that's just not gonna happen um, I have too many other photos <laughs> non staged photos to a scrapbook um, so I just cut the tea part out and I'm going to um, separate the two parts of that um, embellishment and then put the word birthday in the middle so it's always birthday time I think is it birthday or do I do party I think is it birthday so it's always birthday time that's what the title is going to be so you know sometimes I think that we have stuff in our stash and we're like oh I'll, I'll use this I definitely want to use it but then we struggle with figuring out how to use it don't be afraid to take stuff and just cut it and make it work in a different way and make it say something else um, one of the things that I like to do especially and I, I did this on a, a layout recently just taking a sticker that has like words in the center but I don't like the words so I cut it in half and just like use the bottom half to, to peek out from underneath a photo like don't be afraid to cut into things and um, what's the word I'm looking for like manipulate them to make them work for you especially if you were doing a no spend year no spend month shop your stash bash your stash challenge um, go through all your stuff and just see like what could you manipulate to make it work for what you've got going on so now I'm going to I don't know what I'm going to do I'm still adding some embellishments so I have a lot of word embellishments I'm just looking to see if I have any other embellishments that are more like icony um, or you know picture embellishments. Um, I've got some really cool, I love the, the, um, like triangle circle pieces that I got from Michael's, even though I did not like my Michael's shopping experience, but those are really cool. And they almost look like confetti. So again, like thinking about the birthday theme, I'm going to add my journaling here, writing it in with a creative memories, black pen. And then I am going to add a little bit of splatter since I had that saltwater taffy splatter on the one tag. I'm going to add that into the background, especially because I feel like there is a lot of white space on this. Um, and I, I need it to be, I need it to be more. I just need more. So I will do a couple splatters of that as well as I think I throw in um, speckled egg or salvaged patina. Now I can't remember which one it is. Some of the colors tend to look a lot alike and I can't get, I can't keep their name straight. So um, that's going to be the last part of this layout. Always cover your photos before you do your splatters. You'll see I do cover my photos this time. Sometimes I wing it and don't do it, but I would recommend covering your photos. And again, always keep baby wipes handy. So that's pretty much going to do it for this layout. I hope that you guys go hop along with everybody else who is participating. They're all listed down in the description box below, as well as the link for how you can participate in August's Mix It Up Monday Hop. Basically, we're, you know, we're just taking a sketch and we are interpreting it however we want using however using whatever types of mixed media we want. So it's a fun challenge and I hope you participate. I also hope this video was inspiring for you. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hi and I will see you next time. Bye!